Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Seving. Today I'm going to teach you how to do mitered borders. They work great when you have stripes that you want to come together like this or border prints that would look awkward if you all of a sudden cut it off and had another coming down in the other direction. And they're actually pretty easy to do as long as you know the right way to do it. So let's get started. So the biggest difference with doing a mitered border versus a regular border is when you cut your border length of fabric, it needs to be as long as the entire length of that side of the quilt. And normally you would cut your border just to match whatever edge that it's going up against. But in this one, that diagonal needs to go all the way out to the end of your quilt. And so you want to make sure that you cut it to whatever the finish length is going to be. And then what you want to do, and I've already done it on this one, is you want to make an X a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the fabric and however many inches in that the width of your border is going to be once you remove your seam allowance. So in this case, let me grab my ruler here so I can show you. So in this case, my border is six and a half inches wide, so when I remove the uh, seam allowance for that, I need it to go in six and one quarter. So that will remove your quarter inch seam allowance. So I made my mark, my X, six and a quarter in from the edge, and then a quarter inch in from the outside as well. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back side of my uh, quilt top where the border is going on except I'm making the mark in that case a quarter of an inch in from the corner and that's going to give me a guide of where to pin. So I move my sewing machine to the side for a second because I need to pin all the way down the length of my border and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin right through the center of that X on the border and then I'm going to find it on the back side as well. I'm going to put my pin through that X and what this does is this shows where we need to stop stitching when we're sewing the border together because you don't want to sew all the way to the end because then you won't be able to get your miter to work out exactly. So I'm going ahead and pinning that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then you just go ahead and pin down the length of your border every three, four inches or so, just the way you normally would for a regular border, but you want to make sure that you're matching your X's on both your border and the back side of your quilt top. So now I'm back at the sewing machine and it is time to put this through, but instead of starting at the very end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my needle lined up so that it is right over that X that we marked and I'm going to reinforce my stitches. So I'm going to stitch three forward and three back and then I'm going to stitch the length of the border and I'm also going to stop when I get to the other X. So I want to leave that last quarter inch and that first quarter inch free for when we do the miter. Now when you pin your second miter, it's the exact same as the first, except when you are matching up your X's, you also want to make sure that you're holding the fabric that you've already sewn out of the way. Then when you sew it, you will also want to make sure that you're holding that fabric out of the way. And you want to sew right up to that X, but don't go past it because then your miter won't work correctly. So my sewing machine moved out of the way for the next part. Now that I have my ends sewn together and I've left that quarter inch free so that way I can still do this miter. It works to have the bulk of the quilt on the surface so that way you're not fighting to keep it level there. What I want to do is I want to line this up so that way my corners are touching. And then I'm going to put a pin in so that way those two are together. And then I want to get it in line down by where my X is. And I'm going to put a pin in there as well to help hold that in nice and straight. Now I'm going to grab a long ruler and I'm going to mark from the point of my X all the way to the point of my corner where I pinned. And that's gonna be the line that we're going to sew on to do our miter. Let's just go ahead and get that lined up. And go ahead and take your time with this. 
it definitely is not something you want to brush through because it will greatly affect the rest of your finished quilt if you do it wrong. And it's a little easier if you mark from the corner out to the axe rather than coming in. So once I have that line in place, then I'm ready to sew. So I can put my chalk marking tool away and bring my sewing machine back to center. And it doesn't matter so much if you reinforce your stitches at the end, especially if your sewing machine is one that can kind of eat the fabric when you're going into those feed dogs. But you definitely want to reinforce those stitches when you get to the end of the, uh, where the X is. And I'm going to slow down when I get toward that X because I want to make sure I'm not catching any seams in there because otherwise it won't lie flat. And then I want to sew right up to it. And then I want to reinforce my stitches, sewing three back and three forward. This next step is really important. Before you trim off this excess, you want to test your miter. You want to make sure it's square. You want to make sure it's lying flat. You want to make sure there are no puckers. So what you want to do is you want to flip the seam allowance open because we're going to press it open. And then you're just going to lay it nice and flat and make sure that it does in fact lay flat. The first time I did this, the first three were perfect and then I screwed up the fourth one. So you definitely want to check every single time you do this because it's really easy to screw it up once you get towards the end. So once you're done with this, then I can just take this over to the cutting mat and I can trim off the quarter inch seam so that I just have that left. So I'm just going to line that up get my ruler out and then I'm going to cut and then my miter is finished and I am ready to press that. I press all my seams out and I press my miter seam open. That helps it lay really flat. So that's all there is to it. I've got a nice perfect square and flat miter. It really isn't that hard and it really adds a little bit of an extra pizzazz to your quilts when you're doing your borders, especially if they have stripes or those border prints. This works really great for those. Thank you for following along. I'm Stephanie Sebbing from Quilt Addicts Anonymous and make sure you visit the website and click on the tutorial section to see this and lots of other tutorials and happy quilting.